The only question more pertinent than how much do you bench, bruh, these days in the fitness industry is which wearable tech should I be wearing and why? Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today is going to do exactly what it says on the tin and compare Garmin versus Whoop. Which do I use? Why do I use them? And how can you use them in your day-to-day -day fitnessing, exercising, lifestyling, and any other way in which you think one of these things might fit into your day-to-day -day life? So I'm going to break things down from an overview of what I use. I'm going to give an overview of Whoop. I'm going to give an overview of Garmin. I'm going to run through the limitations of Whoop, the limitations of Garmin. I'm going to explain why I use the wearables that I do. Then I'm going to run through a few things that you should consider so that you can make the most informed decision at your end. And then I'm going to conclude by summarizing my thoughts and feelings and opening it up to the floor below in the comments for you to do the same. And as well as commenting as we go, please do like the video. Make sure you have subscribed if you have not yet already and do please give your thoughts and feelings or any consideration that I might have missed or any experiences that you've had in the comments down below. So let's get into today's video. First of all, I think it's probably useful for those of you that might be new around here, hello, to give you a little bit of context on myself. That was a creepy hello. I apologize if that's now pushed you away from my channel, but please bear in mind, I don't normally say hello like that and have confidence that is the last time you will ever see that. Apologies. So context on myself. I train across a variety of disciplines, strength and endurance. I'm predominantly strength and triathlon at the moment, which means lifting in the gym, swimming in open water, swimming in the pool, turbo trainer sessions, sessions on different bikes outside, trail running, hiking, road running, track, all this stuff. So there's a lot of things that I want to track and manage. Alongside that, I run two businesses. So I'm in and out of the office most of the working day. I have a lot of commitments over the weekends, a lot of travel and a lot of things that I want to manage. So managing my overall performance as a human being, staying happy, staying healthy, making sure that I'm optimizing as best I can across all the things I've got going on. Everything I'm saying today is very relevant as part of my broader considerations for that. So why don't we kick things off by breaking down all of the equipment that I use. So on a day-to-day -day basis, this is on me 24 seven, and then I will rotate in other things depending on the activity. If I am working, I will have this on because I like it. And from a bit of a symbolic point of view, when I put that on, that symbolizes I'm getting focused and getting down to work. When I take it off, I'm doing something else. And that's just a bit of a, a boundary metric for me. Bit weird, I know, but it works for me. So don't come at me in the comments calling me a freak. Then when I need to track something like running, pool swimming, whatever it is, I will put this on. And then I use that for the facilities that it has to track those activities. This is a Garmin Phoenix 7X. Very, very sophisticated bit of kit. and It covers a whole load of activity tracking. And then this is there to manage my overall lifestyle. When I'm using my Garmin Phoenix and tracking my activities, I will also have this on as that is there to basically get as close to my heart as possible to give the most accurate data reading. Generally speaking, the difference between this, this, and this is pretty minimal. But as I've been using this for years and years, having that consistent data over the sort of backlog of information that I've got is useful. When I'm out on the bike, I'll be using this. This is a Wahoo Element Bolt. Just a really good bit of kit. Syncs up to my power meter, syncs up to my heart rate, and gives me live feedback right in front of my face when I'm on the bike. So I don't need to be going like this or going like that out of aero position as I'm riding. So that's an overview of all the things that I use on a regular basis in terms of wearable tech and general equipment that falls into this space. So why don't we give a bit of an overview of this thing before we get into the detail. First things first, for the sake of transparency, it's worth mentioning I do now work directly with Whoop, but that was after two months of trial and error and getting used to the data and understanding where it fit into my lifestyle. So if at any stage for you, it sounds like, yes, Whoop is for me, then use the top link in the description down below and you can get your first month free. Don't say I'm not good to you around these parts. It does also do me a solid, so that would be much appreciated as well. Thank you very much. But what is Whoop? Well, in short, it is a very high performance lifestyle wearable tracker, which gives you information across three metrics, which is strain, recovery, and sleep. And the principal reason that I was drawn to Whoop in the first place was because of the sleep metrics and the broader holistic, how can I look at health in a broader term rather than just my athletic performance? And that's why I like having this on because it means it never comes off. It's very small, it's very easy to work with. It charges like this. 
So you never need to take it off, which means that you've always got access to data. And the longer you build that out over time, the more information you have to work with and therefore the more informed decisions you can make on what you do next. So in short, it is a wearable lifestyle tracker that gives you data across those three metric points and is always on your wrist. Next up, we have the Garmin Phoenix 7X, which in short is a world-class activity tracker. You press start here and you have access to a whole load of activities that you can start from tracking golf courses to pool swimming to open water swimming to trail running and everything in between. The live data that you get from this is like being on a treadmill as if you're outdoors and it gives you so much live feedback to inform your training as you're doing it. It's a fantastic piece of kit. I use this predominantly now for running, swimming and hiking. Beyond that, I'll generally be using this on the bike and I will be using this as a lifestyle tracker. So this is coming on and off. I'm not sleeping in this for reasons that I'll explain why soon enough. But for me, taking this on and off like this symbolizes that a certain activity is about to take place and therefore I can switch onto things mentally a little bit more. Worth mentioning that whenever I am using the Garmin Phoenix 7X, I'm using a Garmin HRM Pro as a heart rate strap as well. And then what I'll do afterwards is I will compare heart rate data from these two so that I've got information from different points. So, whoops, limitations, what are they? And I think a lot of this is down to perception because in social media, online, I think there's a bit of a distinction that needs to be made. That This is an activity tracker, this is a lifestyle tracker. So what Whoop doesn't do is what the Garmin does well, which is press start and track an activity. Whoop picks up activities as you go and gives you that data in real time afterwards, but it doesn't have pacing data, it only has heart rate data and additional data that then supports its overall calculation on your recovery, your strain, and then gives you information for you to process to make decisions as a result of that. I hope that makes sense. HRV has become quite misunderstood in social media and the online space. What HRV is not is a performance metric that's solely attached to athleticism and performance. It is in fact our body's method of communication, a holistic viewpoint of stress adaptation from mental health, physical health to spiritual health and everything in between. It's our broader holistic output from a metric point of view that gives us an indication of where we are in our day-to-day -day lives and therefore we can use that information to make more informed decisions moving forwards. It's also, bottom line, an awareness tool. It helps us understand how we're performing day-to-day -day from a broader holistic sense, so it's important to mention that Whoop is not only useful for people that are training in and out of the gym and athletic, it is a fantastic lifestyle tracker for those of you that just want to take a bit more control of your day-to-day -day health and performance, happiness, all the things that go around having a high, healthy, well-informed HRV. Practically speaking as well, Whoop is one product. It's a subscription basis. You know what you're getting. All the information is based around this one product and they're constantly updating and moving things forward. One of the major downsides of Garmin is that it isn't quite so simple in that case. So one of the major limitations with Garmin, I think first and foremost, for those that are looking for their first smartwatch, their first sports tracking watch, their first activity tracker, it's very, very difficult to know which model you should go for. I've got the Garmin Phoenix 7X purely because it is the top of the range model and I have a lot of my life devoted to training. So therefore I thought, get the top of the range model, easy. But even I don't really understand why this is much better than the 7 or the 6X or the Polar or all this stuff, sorry, the Solar. Polar is a completely different watch brand entirely, my mistake. And I don't really know much around the different models. So when people ask me, oh, what do you think of the 935 XT or whatever it is, I don't really know what the differences are. And if it's just design, if it's performance, if it's battery life, all these things, I feel there's too many variations for somebody to really know what they're buying into when they first get into the space, which from a customer point of view, I think is quite convoluted. Secondly, this thing is big. And that's one of the reasons that I ultimately decided I wanted this to work for me. Gave it two months to see if it did. And ultimately, thankfully, it did turn out to work for me very much so. And for me, that was great because it meant I could take this on and off. When I'm sleeping, I hated sleeping in this. It's just too big. I ended up bashing Aaron in the forehead with it, and believe me, that did not go down well. I'd bash myself in the forehead with it, I'd sort of glance my arms like that and just think, this is annoying, I'm gonna take it off. And then I was missing out on sleep data. There's body battery that you get in Garmin that comes from your overall training. But because even before I was using the Whoop, I was using this for my bike, the body battery was, wasn't always as influenced as it would be from Garmin because I wasn't using it for absolutely everything. And I've heard that the body battery feature is very, very good. I haven't used it, so I can't speak to it. But what it's aiming to do is similar to what Whoop is aiming to do. But I think it's become much too complicated because of the limitations of this as a wearable, where this fills that gap in terms of a lifestyle management point of view. Don't get me wrong, it's an absolutely world-class activity tracker. The GPS is fantastic. The heart rate synchronicity with this is fantastic. The data you get on screen, the customization of it is brilliant. But for me, I put it on when I'm about to train and use it for a specific activity, then I take it off. 
And then I also like wearing this when I have it off because if I'm in a restaurant and going out for a nice dinner, I don't want to be sitting there with the, the top of the range Garmin smartwatch on looking like the guy that's going to ruin the conversation by talking about how technical the trails he was on that morning were. And we've all met a person like that. And I think right now we're all thinking, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't that much fun. So breaking down that perception is useful, but the best thing is I still get all the lifestyle tracking of me walking to the restaurant, the impact the booze has on me if I'm drinking at this particular scenario I'm painting out for you here, and I get all that from here. And it's very, very neat and tidy and discreet on your wrist. It's almost like a bracelet, which I think is a massive, massive sell there. So personally, I think one of the solutions Garmin could have created was something that functions like this, that syncs up with this, but the body battery feature, you only get it from devices individually. So I think they're really missing a trick there, and that's ultimately where Whoop have stepped in to cover that side of things. So to summarize the pros and cons of each device, let's start with the Garmin. Pros, it is a world-class activity tracker. The data that you get in real time is fantastic. It can better inform your training, can make your training more effective. It is a great bit of kit in terms of the additional features that it has. It can give you weather forecasts and it gives you some performance metrics that are useful and then some that are not useful, but I'll come on to that. The seamlessness of it, the plug and play element of being able to start an activity, sync it up to things like a heart rate monitor, ANT plus or Bluetooth settings on the laptop, for example, that sort of thing is all very seamless and fantastic. Alongside this, for a sports watch, I do think it looks great, although I do think it's a bit big and doesn't replace a sort of standard dress Swiss watch for me it is a good looking sports watch and there are much uglier ones out there. The battery life on this Phoenix 7X is actually incredible as well. I've had challenges with previous Garmin models where it's been a real pain. I've had to charge them in my backpack for options and things, but this is really, really amazing. I'm charging it on average every three weeks at the moment with activities in between, which to be honest is quite mad. Do bear in mind though, obviously my long bike rides, the five, six hour ones, I'm using this rather than this. So it's not eating into the battery quite as much as it otherwise would be. But the battery life on this thing is very, very impressive. Cons. It's too big. I don't like having it on all the time because it's just too big. I can't speak for all the other Garmin models. Obviously, there might be some smaller ones out there that tick all the boxes for you. But the Phoenix is the top of the range sort of flagship. This is creme de la creme model. For me, it's just too big. I don't enjoy it. It gets caught in my wetsuit, taking a tri suit off. And I'm caught like this, like begging for help. Being like, can somebody get my watch off me, please? It's just, it's a pain. It's a pain. And, and ultimately, it's a pain at times when I want things to be seamless. And whilst all the data is fantastic, I do prefer taking it on and off for that reason. So sleep, you lose out on the sleep data and body battery elements that it gives you by having it on all the time. Because for me, it's too big to sleep in. It's too big to keep on all the time. And I think that is a big drawback, especially as Garmin don't have a solution in their ecosystem to be able to fill that gap when it comes to giving you the body battery across devices. Another con, they're very pricey. This set me back about 800 quid and there's features on here that I'll never even know exist. And whilst it's fantastic, the durability is great. Average lifespan of my Garmin's have been about two years, give or take, but it's a lot of money. There's no two ways around it. You can get a pretty nice dress watch that will look great on anyone's wrist for that amount of money. And whilst this does have loads of features and access to satellites up in the sky, it's, it is a lot of money to invest into a health and fitness wearable bit of tech. As with all wearable technology, the open water swimming tracking could be better as well. Final thing I'll say on that. Another con is a lot of the advice that Garmin tries to give you. I know you can turn it on and off, but I actually haven't figured out how to do it with a lot of it, so I kind of just exit it. Can piss me off because it gives you your VO2 max, which is a complete estimate because this is not giving you the information that you need. I've got athletes that constantly talk about their Garmin VO2 max, and it's just so variable based on things that don't really matter. And whilst, yes, it can be a good metric to track in inside of Garmin over time, it's not a true reflection of your VO2 max. It's telling you you're unproductive or you're recovering when you've had an absolutely hellish training week. It's suggesting that you do a base five minute per K run for 30 minutes when you've got a four hour run planned. It just, it just gives you information that I don't want it to when I just want it to be what it is, which is an activity tracker. And yes, I know I probably have a bit more control over what I see and what I don't there, but the fact that I haven't been able to easily find it and turn it off and keep it off is speaking to the fact that it isn't quite as plug and play as I would like it to be, whereas this is in some ways. So pros and cons of the Whoop. Pros, it is very slick, minimal, fits on. You've got a whole load of variation in terms of colorways and, and all that stuff. So you can make it work for you however you want it to look. And it doesn't really get in the way that this can over wetsuits, under wetsuits, etc. all that stuff. 
Secondly, the software is very, very easy to use. The app itself is fantastic. They're constantly updating it and constantly recalibrating it over time. In terms of lifestyle tracking, Whoop is about as good as it gets when it comes to calibrating your HRV metrics, your sleep metrics, your strain metrics, and pulling them all together to give you information. And as it is on my wrist all the time, whilst the Garmin is not, the information coming from this is much more valuable than the suggestions that Garmin might be making, which is why I use them for the reasons that I do. Just quickly on that as well, HRV, I know I've mentioned it a few times, it's not a performance metric. It's not inherently good or bad, depending on a certain number, and it's not principally a measure of output. But what Whoop is for me is another fantastic bit of information, calibration for me to take the information, understand it within the context of my day-to-day -day life, and help me make decisions on what I do next to better recover, to train better, to get the best out of myself cognitively, to get the best night's sleep that I can. Some people do end up buying into this being the be-all and end-all and the gospel and, oh, I can't train today because Whoop says I'm not recovered. And for some people that might work, but I very much encourage you all to view this as one part of a broader ecosystem of holistic considerations when it comes to getting the best out of a balanced lifestyle to be the best version of yourself. And that means your mental health, your physical performance, your work performance, your cognitive ability, how present you are when you're spending time with families and friends, what your routine, your circadian rhythm is like, all these things. It's not just CrossFit performance. It's not just how hard have I worked, how hard can I recover. This narrative of train hard, recover harder. Honestly, I know there'll be some people that buy into it that might be watching, but the train hard, recover harder mentality of some people I've seen out on social media is not the way I encourage people to use these. I encourage people to use these as part of a broader consideration so that they can make better decisions on their health and well-being on a day-to-day -day basis, ultimately with more information. Another practical consideration and another pro is that this is a subscription model, works out around $30 a month, obviously depending on what currency you're working with versus 800 pounds going between currencies here how confusing but that will keep you all on your toes won't it one off which means that the significant cash spike that comes from this versus the sort of spread out cost of this means that if you use this for six years yes it's going to end up costing more than this did but that means you really buy into the service if you use it for three months and it's not for you you haven't spent a huge amount of money on a device you no longer use which in my mind is another pro another one is that there's a whole load of supplementary information education and articles advice loads of stuff going on in the whoop app itself which is the hub for everything so whenever you're in there checking on your performance scores etc etc you have access to other bits of information that again can better inform the decisions you make next so what are the cons Let limitations of Whoop. Ultimately, it's not an activity tracker. I know some people that try and use it as one and use it for that data, but ultimately it's never going to be as good as Garmin are at that because they're different products. Activity tracker, lifestyle tracker. This is on you 24-7 to give you the information around your holistic well-being, including your training, including your sleep, including your overall recovery, which is all influenced by the things that I've mentioned over and over again in this video. This is not isolated to fitness, this is not isolated to athletes, whereas this is much more in that space where it only has certain purposes for certain people, because most people would probably rather wear something like this, but they would probably benefit from something like this. However, one con that I didn't mention is that Whoop doesn't have a step count, which I know for some people that are at a lower level of their fitness journey or at a point where they just want to focus on being a bit healthier might be something that you would like to have. Garmin has a step count, Whoop does not. Something to bear in mind. One of the cons of wearing the Whoop obviously means that it's another wearable that you're paying out on whilst having to use this, whilst having to use this. And it would be nice, wouldn't it, if all of the data was to be housed in one place and you didn't have to have multiple devices across multiple companies. But whilst Whooper leading the way on this side of things, Garmin leading the way on this side of things, I personally don't have a problem with spreading things out across different devices, but ultimately training is a huge part of my life. So for you guys at home, I think it's very much a, a case of what makes sense financially, what do you deem valuable for you, where do you fill the gaps, and can you, for example, make do with one of these rather than having one of these where you just look at your watch as you're riding, that sort of thing. So a few things to consider there. Another limitation or con of the Whoop is that if you, like me, are quite psychologically obsessive with things, it's quite easy to occasionally misplace this or forget to charge it at some point. And if you then go a few days without the data, you can start to feel like you're missing out on something. So I think it's important to cultivate a healthy relationship with this and that's why I always encourage people not to view it as the gospel, the be-all and end-all. It is one part of a bigger puzzle. I'm sorry, I'm ruining this as I'm trying to put this back on charge here. 
There we are. So it's one part of a much bigger puzzle, and that's something that I'm really, really keen to hammer home on. Okay, so why do I use what I do? I've obviously covered it a lot from this side of things, but I want you to understand how this all fits into my day-to-day -day life, into the ecosystem of my training, my existence, my lifestyle, etc., etc. Whoop, I use because it gives me lots of valuable information that can better inform the decisions I make on my health, my performance, my cognitive abilities, my outputs as an entrepreneur, my outputs as a dog dad, as a fiance, all this stuff. And that information is something that I consider. If I wake up and I've slept really badly, according to Whoop, and I feel terrible, then what I'll do is make, make an effort to get to bed earlier that night. If I've had a really big training session, I get a good night's sleep and Whoop's still telling me I'm a bit battered, I'll make a conscious effort to really get to bed early that night. As I'm very focused on getting up at the same time every day, this is a really, really good way. Oh my God, I haven't even mentioned the best part. How have I got this far without mentioning this? This is my favorite thing about this. Oh. Fergus, however many minutes into the video we are now, I'm disappointed with myself, but you will all know that I talk quite openly about circadian rhythm, and I like to get up at the same time every day, which for me is 5 a.m. And this here is my office. This is where I leave my phone overnight. I'm a huge, huge advocate of not sleeping with your phone in the same room. It means that you're not on your phone before you go to bed. It means that you're not tempted to look at social media or receive the stress of your boss asking for something at five in the morning that's then in your head and it then ruins your morning before it's even began. Leaving your phone in another room is a great habit to improve overall sleep quality that doesn't need a whoop. It's just something we can all do and we can all get better from, in my mind. However, even with the phone in another room, when the alarm goes off and you go to turn off the alarm, you will see the notifications that pop up. And that means that immediately you're getting a dosage of, oh God, I need to get to that, oh, I forgot about that, oh, today's that day, before your day's even begun, which means that you're on the back foot before things have even kicked off. But what this does is through the app, is it can function as an alarm on your wrist. And for me, that has been one of the best features of this thing because it's a very soft vibration that wakes you up. It doesn't wake Aaron up. I can just tap it here twice, turns off, I get up and I get on with my day. And it's entirely up to me when I look at this bloody thing that drives me insane. So it's entirely my choice. Oh, look, an email. See, now I'm distracted. My day's ruined, this video's over. You see where I'm going with this. That is a fantastic feature. And I can't even remember how we went on this tangent why I use what I do. So I use this as a overall lifestyle tracker. I've said that definitely. I use this to better monitor my circadian rhythm and therefore it influences what time I go to bed the night before because I'm always getting up at the same day. It tells me how much of an impact alcohol has had on me. It tells me how long of a lasting impact alcohol has had on me if I've had five or six beers on a Saturday. If I'm getting to Tuesday and it's telling me that I'm still battered, then what's the takeaway? Don't have five or six beers on a Saturday. I don't think you need to really watch this far in the video to know that, but here we are. I'm not too fussed about the step count thing, so I think that's why this is a fantastic combination for me. Fight pose, grr. And then, Garmin for me is an activity tracker, so therefore I use it to track activities. And when I do so, I will add in the Garmin HRM Pro to make my heart rate as accurate as possible and have multiple data points to compare from the HRM Pro to the data from Whoop. Generally speaking, other than when I'm in the water under a wetsuit just because there's so much going on, the data is generally largely the same within sort of three to five beats per minute, which is very encouraging for the wrist-based HR that comes from Whoop. For my bike rides, I will use the Wahoo Element Bolt because it is a tried and tested fantastic cycling company that gives you all the information right in front of you, specific pacing, specific data, power data that I get from my pedals on both my bikes, and all I need to do is twist it off and put it on one bike to the next, easy. Again, lots of pros on this thing, not too many cons, great bit of kit, but again, Wahoo, Garmin, Whoop, three different devices, three different companies. So how do I tie this all together? As I've mentioned, training peaks. So I know it's somewhat frustrating and the market that we operate in means that there isn't really one app that we can use all this data if we're wanting to calibrate everything together. If you just want to track your athletic performance over time, Strava is fantastic for that as it does have some features on training management, fatigue management and stress. But if you're wanting to look at your lifestyle and broader sleep metrics and all the stuff that I think we should all be doing, Whoop steps in fantastically. If you want a pretty high tech bit of kit to be able to track your activities, the Garmin 7X is fantastic but there are lots of other models out there that I don't know much about. One tip I would give you though, is if you're on a budget, is try and get a refurbished or a rebuilt model of these from Amazon, because you can get them about 30, 40% off. That's what I've done for the past few years up until I bought this one, because I just thought, let's go top of the range, because training is such a big part of my life, obviously. So for me, training peaks I can sync this up with, training peaks I can sync this up with, and training peaks I can sync this up with. And it has some fantastic management features in there so that I use my overall 
athletic management, taking in consideration this stuff through training peaks, but I look at my day-to-day -day lifestyle decisions based on this. I look at my day-to-day -day performance decisions and use this as a pacing monitor from an overall consideration that comes from training peaks. Big con of all these things as a whole is that there is not one system or one device that does all of these things. And I think it's up to these companies to be that system and be that company that does it because that is a gap in the market that probably needs filling, in my humble opinion. These are all great at what they do individually, but they all do very different things. And that is the main takeaway I wanna to give to you guys today is that these are different products. One serves a purpose, one serves a different purpose. Which purpose is more valuable to you if you're only gonna get one is the decision to be made. If you're gonna get both, then look at the features that you want in the Garmin and try and find a table. DC Rainmaker's probably done a fantastic one of telling you what device you're looking for, and then grab one of, one of these. And if you do, use my link in the description down below to get your first month free. You are most, most welcome, and thank you, because it does also do me a favor, as I've already mentioned. But the things that you should consider beyond that is, again, which models suit you and your needs. You don't need to go really high spec if you're not doing a lot of the things that the high spec warrants. If you're somebody that wants to be wearing one of these all the time, you might be a watch collector or be mad into sort of minimalist, stylish, up and coming watch brands, then one of these is a great solution. And it means that you don't need to sort of have the constant, oh, I'd like to be wearing the watch that I spent a lot of money on, but don't ever get to wear it because I've always got to have this on, that sort of narrative. And oh my God, you look like a chopper if you had this on one wrist and this on another. I mean, yes, there's a practical reason for it. And I'm all for performance management, but you would look like a bit of a goon. I think we could all unanimously agree. And if you're watching and that's something you do, well, I'm sorry, but I think you should probably reconsider, I'm afraid. So overall summary is that neither Whoop nor Garmin is better than the other. They do different things for different purposes and they are both brilliant at what they do. Whoop is a fantastic overall lifestyle tracker so that you can make more informed decisions about your overall holistic well-being and management, but it is one part of a bigger ecosystem of things to consider. Garmin is a world-class activity tracker. This is the Phoenix 7X specifically. Whole range of other models that are all brilliant at what they do, but they have their limitations and the synchronicity between apps, devices, and the overall practicality of these means that some of the features like the body battery, the sleep metrics, the performance metrics, and the suggestions it gives you based on the data it has aren't as reliable as what you can ascertain from this, which is where I think one of the major limitations of Garmin is. My solution to that is I use this purely for activity tracking, keep this on 24 seven, put this on when I'm not wearing this, and use this to give my heart rate data the most accuracy that I possibly can and collaborate it all through training peaks from a personal point of view. Strava is also a fantastic feature that I use to pull all this data together. And then I use Wahoo for all my biking stuff. Again, goes to Strava, goes to training peaks, is informed by the information that I get from here. And then that helps inform the decisions I make around when I go to bed, nutrition, the activities, whether I go and hit some golf balls at the driving range that night or whether I should just take it easy, whether I really work hard until 10 p.m. or whether I should just unwind and go to bed early. How much of an impact things like this are having for me? Because I notice on Whoop, if I'm not having my pre-sleep supplement from Human24, then my quality of sleep is inhibited. And it's just good to know through the data that you are getting positive reinforcement from that sort of thing. It's things like what time of the day do I train? What time of the day do I eat? All these things, when you look at them in isolation and try and track backwards, okay, I didn't recover well this morning. Let's think back to what I did differently. Okay, it might be that. Let's look at this. Okay, I'll do it the next couple of days eating a bit earlier. Oh, my recovery is better. I feel better. And then before you know it, you can find a really solid rhythm for what works for you as an individual. So I appreciate that's predominantly been a review of how these things work within my individual context, but I hope there's been some things that you can take away from that in terms of information. And of course, any questions that you do have, please drop them down in the comments below. I'm not that well practiced at doing review videos as such, so any tips or tricks or pointers in terms of things you'd like more information on, please do let me know for next time. But other than that, ask in the comments down below and I'll give as much information as I can on my thoughts and feelings on the answer. What I've done as well is I've linked a whole lot of studies on HRV down in the description down below because I do generally think it's quite a misunderstood metric and I think some of the work hard, recover harder gang are potentially overplaying where our HRV fits for us. It's not just a performance metric. It's ultimately an awareness tool that we can use to calibrate on ourselves individually to again, drink every time Fergus says, make more informed decisions. Sorry, you're not gonna be uh, able to drive home tonight, I fear. But again, it is a way that you can make more informed decisions when you consider it within your own individual context. So 
That is it from me today. Please do remember to like the video, comment down below as there's a lot to talk about here, I'm sure. Please do share your experiences with any of the devices that I've shared today. And please do make sure that you've subscribed and put on the bell notifications if you have not yet already. Whole load of discounts, links that you can use in my description down below. So if any of the brands that kindly look after me seem exciting to you, then description is the best place for that. And final reminder, you can get a month of Whoop for free using the link in the description down below. And I would urge you to take the opportunity because it means that you've got time to give it a go, see where it fits into your lifestyle. And if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. But if it does, you get your first month for free. I get a bit of a kickback. You simultaneously support the channel. These videos will get better and better. I'll do more and more stupid stuff. The end. Goodbye. Thank you.